this morning. Now this morning we're going to uh, conclude talking about leadership in the church and we're going to talk about the responsibilities of elders and deacons this morning. These are men of God that God has chosen to be leaders in the church. Therefore, they have great responsibilities. Now, I found a good acronym for the word leadership in Walt Telestads, I think that's how you pronounce his name, but the, the everyday, anytime guide to Christian leadership. And here it is. L stands for love unconditionally. E is for envision the future exceptionally. A is for affirm continuously. D stands for discipline with determination. E is for energize others enthusiastically. R is for risk boldly. S stands for serve selfish, selflessly. H is for hope relentlessly. I is for imagine immeasurably. And P is for pray persistently. This helps sets up the roles, duties, and responsibilities for our elders and our deacons in our congregation. Each of these acronyms somewhere falls in the responsibilities of these leaders. So we're going to look first at the responsibilities of our elders. The first thing that we see is that our elders are the spiritual leaders of the church. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, they're given this charge. It says, keep watch over yourself and all, this, all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God which he brought with his own blood. See, in this passage we see that being an elder is a calling. It's placed on those who serve by the Holy Spirit. And they're called to keep watch over themselves and the flock. Why is that? It's because church leaders are usually the first to be attacked by Satan. In order to protect the church, our elders must first protect themselves from Satan's attacks. And we know that Satan will attack. If you are in the will of God, if you are doing the will of God in your life and in your church, Satan's coming after you. Sometimes he'll even attack you from within the church. So elders have to be prepared. They have to protect the church from division and other attacks that Satan can bring upon us. That's part of the responsibility of being shepherds. See, being shepherds means that the elders are the spiritual leaders of the church. They are to ensure that the correct doctrine is being taught. And that leads us to our next responsibility. Elders are to teach and to preach. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, it says, The elders who direct the affairs of the church will be worthy of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and teaching. See, last couple of weeks ago, when we looked at the qualifications of elders, we saw that they must be able to teach. See, as a group, elders are to ensure that the correct doctrine is being taught. And that includes the Sunday school and sermons and Bible study and in other programs that we may develop inside the church, the best way to ensure that correct doctrine is being taught is to teach it. Well, most of the church teachers in the church, no matter what church you go to, are not elders. The elders are responsible for what's being taught. They are to ensure that the teachers are teaching in line with Scripture. Then we look at elders are responsible to serve and to set the example for the church. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2 through 3, it says, Be shepherds of God's flock, again, that is under your care. Watch over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Here Peter lists the qualifications of elders. 
of eldership, but he also points out that elders serve not because they have to, but because they choose to serve. It's a calling from God through the Holy Spirit, but it also must be the choice of the elder. You see, sometimes, many times, someone may be qualified to serve as an elder, but choose not to. Elders must be eager to serve, not to do it out of necessity. Because if elders are eager to serve, they're going to be more willing to work together as a group for the benefit of God's people. And as we saw in the qualifications of elders that we looked at a couple weeks, and we also see in this package, this passage, elders must have their lives in order. Because they are the examples for the entire church to follow. It's important because in roles of leadership, everybody is watching the elders' actions, their attitudes, and their lives. Those within the church and those without the church are always watching. I learned a very important lesson early in my work life. One of my managers told me one time, says, Never ask anybody to do something that you are not willing to do yourself. Set the example by doing the work. Set the example by following God's leadership. The best leaders are good followers of Jesus Christ. The best people to set an example are those that are good followers of Jesus Christ. Because everybody is watching. Elders are to set the best examples that they can set. Elders are also managers of the church. And in Titus chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Since an overseer manages God's, God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. A lot of this we read, and when we read in 1 Timothy where Paul gave the qualifications of elders, Paul also tells Titus these qualifications. But as we saw a few minutes ago, that the elders direct the affairs of the church. In other words, they manage God's house. The elders are to make decisions about financial issues about the education curriculum, about the programs. They're to have a vision and a direction for the church. The vision and direction are very important for the church because without a plan for the future, the church will not survive into the future. Elders are responsible for everything that happens within the church especially the direction of the church. They're chosen to make decisions. Oftentimes, those are difficult decisions to make. But they have to be willing to make those decisions. They have to be willing to follow where God leads them. We may not like where God leads us, but if God is leading us in a certain direction, it's our responsibility to follow and to lead the church in that direction. And elders are to encourage sound doctrine, but also to oppose false teachings. In Titus chapter 1, verse 9, it says, He must hold firmly to the trustworthy messages that has been taught, so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. See, if elders are responsible for the teaching of sound doctrine, they're also responsible for encouraging others to follow that doctrine. To follow the Word of God. Talked in our Sunday school class this morning that when it comes to the Word of God and following Jesus Christ, you're either 100% in or you're 100% out. There is no 99.9% .9 of believing the Bible to be true. And oh, I don't believe this one little line. Either you believe it or you don't. And elders are responsible, responsible for teaching it 
and encouraging others to believe and to follow. It's through the doctrine that they can encourage others inside and outside the church to follow Jesus Christ. Following sound doctrine will help others to be able to stand strong against the attacks of Satan. And this goes back to the elders' responsibility of being shepherds. Part of protecting the church includes protecting it against false doctrine and false teachers. And if you've ever turned on the TV and you watch some of these TV preachers, you can tell right off the bat that they're teaching stuff that's contrary to Scripture. And our elders are responsible for being able to catch on to that and be able to tell somebody that may be getting, falling into that, maybe buying into that, that, hey, this doesn't line up with Scripture. This is not the truth. Part of protecting the congregation is protecting sound doctrine in the church. That's why the qualifications of elders are so high. In order to protect Against this false doctrine, these false teachers, the elders must know the truth of God's Word. They are to hold anyone who speaks in the church, though whether it's through preaching or teaching, they are to hold them accountable for speaking and teaching correct doctrine. And then finally we see that elders are to lay hands on the sick and pray. In James chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, we read, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The, power, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It is this place where we find that it's the responsibilities of elders to lay their hands on the sick, to anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord, and to pray for them. <coughs> Prayer is powerful, especially when it's coming from the spiritual leaders of the church. The elders have a responsibility to the church to pray for those in need. We all have that responsibility. Mind you. But as the spiritual leaders of the church, the elders are called to be the ones to lay their hands on and pray. And since they are the trusted confidence of the church, people will go to the elders when they need help. And the elders, leading a righteous life as possible, are able to pray for those who have sinned, they're able to pray for those who are sick, bringing healing and forgiveness from God through their prayers. Their prayers are answered because as the spiritual leaders of the church, as their close relationship with Jesus Christ, they are praying the will of God. Their responsibilities of elders are great but also the responsibilities of deacons are great as well. And in Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, we read, In those days when a number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. This passage right here says the responsibilities of deacons as the workers in the church. They are the ones responsible for taking care of the physical needs of the church the members of the church, and the community surrounding the church. In this passage, we see that some of the Jewish widows were being neglected because many of them had come from different regions. They spoke different languages, be it Greek, 
instead of Hebrew or Aramaic. They were being overlooked. These barriers caused some of them to be ignored by those that were disappearing, distributing the food even though they were Christians. There was a culture barrier. There was a language barrier. Therefore, these Jews, they complained to the twelve, to the apostles. And the apostles had a full-time responsibility of teaching, preaching, and praying like our elders do. Therefore, in order to allow them to do their jobs effectively, they needed help. So they had seven men appointed to meet the needs of the Christians, to meet the physical needs of those that were part of the church. Of course, we get a couple more qualifications of deacons. They must be full of the Spirit and have wisdom. That means they're able to take what God's Word says and apply God's truth to life situations. See, there's a lot of physical work that needs to be done in the church in order for the church to be effective. The deacon is responsible for that work getting done. I'll give you an example. A lot of times in larger churches, they have committees. They may have a building committee, a grounds committee, a setup committee for events, a cleanup committee. Go on and on. The bigger the church, the more the committees. Each deacon is usually responsible for a committee. They will make sure that the committee members know what needs to be done and ensure that it gets done. Now in a small church like ours, a deacon may be the committee. Or may be multiple, may have multiple committees. Multiple responsibilities. But since the elders are responsible for the spiritual life of the church, the elders must also be involved in this, making sure that the deacon is fulfilling his responsibility. While the elder is not doing the physical work, he makes sure that the deacons have what they need in their leadership roles through mentoring, counseling, guiding, and advising those deacons. The deacons are doing the physical work. Another example is if a church has a community outreach program, the deacons are responsible for the work in the program. To sum it up, the deacons are the worker bees of the church. If you know anything about bees, you know what I mean. They're always going, always working, always serving. Always following God. And while doing the work can be difficult, the deacons must follow what Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 says. It says, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. But remember again, deacons aren't the only one of, ones that should follow this. Each and every one of us should follow this. We should all work as a serving the Lord. But the deacons should ensure that they demonstrate that attitude while doing the work of the church. And remember, as the deacons do the work, as the elders lead, we are to serve and work right beside them. It's not just their responsibility. The responsibility falls on all of us. Elders are held to high standards as they are responsible for the spiritual life of the church. While it's not their while this is their primary responsibility, it's not their only responsibility. But all of their responsibilities fall into their jobs as shepherds of God's people. They are qualified, willing, and elected by the members of the church to take the church, to lead the church in the direction that God leads them. While we see all the responsibilities of the elders, we see that the elders are the helpers of the ministry. They visit the sick and pray for them. They teach, they help the minister guide and protect the spiritual life of the church. And the deacons are the workmen of the church. They ensure that the physical duties of the church are taken care of. They allow the elders to concentrate on preaching and teaching of God's Word. And today we have the honor of ordaining a deacon.
Today we have the honor of ordaining Brother Kevin Linson as a deacon here at First Christian Church. So Brother Kevin, Brother Walt, I ask you guys to come up. Uh, Brother Walt has a, uh, a brief reading uh, in which uh, responsive reading uh, with, with the congregation. So we'll go through that and then Kevin, Kevin and I have a, a quick conversation uh, to have in front of all of you. Uh, and then we'll call the elders up and they'll lay their hands on Kevin and we'll pray. Uh, and, and Kevin will be officially ordained. So uh, without any further ado, I turn it over to, to Brother Paul Daniel. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Father, we thank you for your son, 
We thank you for all that you do. Bless us, Father, and give us give us direction that we need to go. It's in your Son Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Kevin and Melissa have been with us for about two years now. They've been a blessing since the day they yes. walked through the doors. Yes. Uh, it's an honor to have Kevin uh, step up and serve, uh, serve as a deacon uh, as a member of our, our leadership team. So uh, thank God that, that he's placed them here with us.